Welcome to part three of my geometry notes for beginners course on YouTube. If you haven't already seen the first two parts, go ahead and check it out. But in this part, we're going to be looking at selection. So what we're going to be doing here, we're going to be setting up a little situation um, where we're going to be just making a very simple distortion with a noise modifier. But we're going to be looking at this thing here with the set position called the selection input. So you can see here, um, we want to take a certain part, in this case, we'll look at how, for example, to isolate um, everything on the Z axis, and then we'll look at how to um, separate everything on the X, for example. So this is gonna be a really important part of being able to do certain things to these selection inputs on different geometry nodes in Blender. So um, yeah, I know this is a little bit dry sometimes, but I hope that this is something you guys can learn um, because it's gonna be really important as you progress and as we continue in this um, series here. So this is the selection input of the set position. So I'm gonna go ahead and just open up a new scene in Blender. And let's go ahead to our geometry nodes input once it's opened up and we're selecting the default cube. And let's just go over here and go new. And let's go ahead, shift a search and let's get a sphere go uv sphere and place it on this cable so now we have something that we can distort so remember in the previous part we looked at the set position so let's go shift a search and get a set position place it over here on this cable and just like we've already looked at you can actually grab the offset here click and drag on it and then simply when you let go type in noise and get a simple noise texture. And what you can do is make sure you plug the color into the offset. There we go. Let's go Shift A, search, and just quickly type in vector and get a vector math over here. And we're gonna place it on this cable. And remember, because Blender offsets it by 0.5 on each axis, when we use the noise modifier, we simply just need to go ahead and subtract each one of these coordinates by a value of 0.5. So now it is back in the center. So now we've ruffled up our UV sphere here, right? So the thing is, this is all good, right? We've done this before in the previous part. We um, used the set position, but now we're gonna look at this thing here called the selection because we actually only want to have this happen to a specific part. So whenever we're working with this, we need to look at the position. So we're gonna actually click on the selection and click and drag, let go, and let's type in position. And this is gonna tell us that we wanna work with our position. Now, what is our position? Now, I'm gonna quickly demonstrate here by going Shift A, going and adding in, for example, a UV sphere just in the 3D scene over here. I'm gonna move it over. This is just a normal UV sphere. It doesn't have geometry nodes. But if we were to actually scale this by pressing S, we can see it all scales evenly. And as soon as we were to, for example, tab into edit mode and go G and move it inside of edit mode, the origin point is now no longer in the center. So now if we go S, it kind of scales, but it scales off to the side. And if we were to double tap R to rotate, it doesn't rotate around the middle because the position of this object is actually being calculated from the origin point. So this is kind of like a very basic thing that you'd already know about if you've used Blender um, without geometry nodes, it's just general Blender uh, modeling, how you work with objects. And in the very same way, if we grab our geometry notes object here, this position is gonna be working from that position. Now it happens to be in this case that this object is sitting right in our world center. So we can kind of look at this Z, X and Y coordinates here. as kind of like giving us an idea of what we're working with. So the blue line is the Z, the X goes across like this and then the Y runs across like this. Okay, so something that we're already familiar with, a very basic concept. So selecting our geometry notes object, we now are telling the selection that we wanna work with the position and at the moment, we need to tell us what position we want to work with. So we're going to go Shift A, Search, and we're going to get a separate. So we're going to type in S, E, P, and we're going to get a separate X, Y, and Z. And we're going to take this and place it on this cable between the position and the selection. And now we have the X, Y, and Z coordinates. So let's say, for example, we want to grab the Z component, which is the going up and down like this. So let's take the Z, plug that into the selection, and now it's only selecting the Z here. But the problem is, or I guess not a problem, but it's just a feature of the selection. The selection always selects up into the positive range. So for example, over here, it's going in to the Z positive because it's starting at zero. And if we were to take the X here, 
it's starting in the middle and it's going along the X positive by default, right? Um, I'm gonna quickly grab my annotate tool just to show you guys. So in the center here, we have zero, like so. And then going up here like so, on the Z, we have the Z and that is a meter up. In fact, this is a meter height over here and that is in the positive range. And then going down from here to the bottom on the Z, we have one, a, a one meter, but that is in the negative range, right? And at the moment, it's selecting everything from zero up to um, positive ones. Let's just grab the Z again, plug it in here. Okay, so how do we control this amount? And that's very simple. We can now go shift a search and get a math. Just grab a math node and then place it over here. And now we can do all sorts of things. For example, we can take the add here and we can add a value to it. So at the moment, it's taking this negative value and up, up from there and it's actually adding this value to it, which is why it's coming down. So if we actually grab this and take it down into the negatives, we are actually now, um, it's going, it's taking away from that. So it's actually starting a little bit higher. So to put it more simply, if we were to actually put this at zero, it's just exactly as it was, how the input is coming here from the separate geometry. So we can add values or we can take values. So now we can control more or less along that um, Z component here from the separate X, Y, Z. And in a very similar way, we can come here and duplicate these two nodes. We're going Shift D and let's just bring them and put them underneath here. And we can move these guys down, put them underneath like so. There we go. And then now we can take this input and plug it into the separate order selection here. And now let's make this one the X component. But we need to make sure it is also using the position. So make sure that the position is plugged into the vector here. And now it's doing the same thing here, but only on the X. We're separating the X. So it's going along this way on the positive X. So now we kind of understand how we can select different things how we can add and take from those values if we want to select more or less. And you could do the exact same thing, by the way, on the Y axis. So we can do it on the Y, the exact same thing. So now that we have that in mind, let's come over here and let's just grab our top one that we had, plug it into the selection, and we're gonna stay with the Z. And we're gonna leave this value, uh, maybe let's just bring it just a little bit um, down by adding to it, just so it starts a little bit lower than zero. And we're in our front view again. And now let's do something here with our noise texture. So let's actually grab this subtract and go shift D to duplicate, place it on here. And let's just change this to a scale so we can actually control the strength of this noise. And let's just come here to the scale on the noise and make it two. And maybe let's make the scale a little bit bigger here. So it's a bit more, yeah, like that, a bit bigger. And at the moment it's going out kind of in all directions like this. So let's only constrain that noise to the Z. And the way we can do that is by simply going Shift A, search and getting a combine. Let's get a combine X, Y, and Z. And then let's place it from the scale output here. And then let's just place it into the Z. So now whatever is happening here, this distortion, is only gonna go up on the Z. So if we grab the scale here, we can see that a little bit better, increasing it there. So now we can do something really cool. We can come to this noise texture and change it to 40. That just simply adds time as an extra dimension. And now if we grab this W value and slide it, it changes. So what we can do, we can actually click on this W and drag and just type in frame. And let's just get a scene time frame. So now it's gonna update for every frame. So if we hit the space bar, this is gonna play as an animation, but it's going too fast. So let's just go shift A search and get a math node, not a vector math, but just a math and place it over here. And let's multiply this value by a small value. So if you multiply any value by a small value, value, it's gonna make it smaller. So let's make it 0 0.01. So now if we hit the space bar, we got this nice slow effect. And you can come here, mess around with things like the scale and the scale on the vector map, which is gonna determine the strength. So now we have this really cool effect and we're only constraining it to one of the um, axes here. So the Z component. How cool is that? So now we have a kind of working example here. In fact, let's simplify things here. We're just grabbing all of this stuff down here, that the effect, and let's just press Control G and then tab back out. Now it's its own little group. 
And let's just get rid of these two nodes down here and just grab the position, the separate and the add, and then just move our sphere over here. So now we can kind of see over here what we're dealing with. Just gonna reiterate, so we have our effect, we have our set position, this is the object that it's doing it to, and now we have given it a selection with three simple nodes. Okay, so that has been a um, little beginner's introduction to how we can work with the selection. I hope it didn't get too complicated. I know this probably feels complicated if you're absolutely new, you know, seeing like, you know, like these positives and negatives, but really this is, this is as simple as North and South. This is a really like ABC level stuff. It's actually really simple. And as much as I might be making it look complicated, it really isn't. We're essentially saying start in the middle of an object, go one meter up or go one meter down, right? That's all we're really doing and telling it to select that. So I hope that you can take something away from this. I'll see you in the next part where we're gonna look more in depth at math nodes. We've used these math nodes now a little bit, but we'll go more in depth with them and I'll show you some examples of how we can utilize them. So I'll see you in the next part.